If happiness is love, design is empathy. Design is a process for understanding the people because in the end, you are not your market. So you have to establish empathy with your market. End users are where the value is derived from. And the way I look at the world is that you have, you have investors that give money to companies. You have companies that get money from customers. But the ultimate value comes from the end users being surprised and delighted by products and services that fill their unmet needs. Because if we do that and we walk in the end user's shoes, we understand who they are and what they're trying to do. And we find out what their unmet needs are. We can't help them. The reality is 66% of the, of the things that we send overseas and get money for are things that you either dig up or kill and eat or wear. The problem is there's only a certain amount of things you can dig up or kill or eat or wear before you start running out of things to dig up and kill and eat and wear. So we have to obviously diversify the sorts of things that we do in order to grow our export base. This is one of our most popular values within Bend, probably because it has a swear word in it, uh, which, you know, just fucking do it. If you've got a great idea, if a retailer is having trouble, whatever it is, if it seems obvious, then do it. Every single technology or improvement to our lives begins as an idea. And that means every single company begins with an idea, and that is with IP. But often we tend to focus on the trees, the tangible products, and not the wood, the intellectual property itself. And that IP is in itself a valuable asset and a major driver for exit value. We try and figure out just where things um, are sitting, but then we sit back and we make a judgement about the product, whether we think that people will buy it and keep on buying it. We make a judgement about the board and whether we think that they, are, they can actually manage this process. We make a judgement about the management team, how driven they are and whether we think they're going to be successful in it. Um, we also make a judgement about the stock market and whether we think that we can get that business out and listed within one or two or three years. Um, we're judging around the risks and the limitations for growth. This is not about taking money and selling our businesses to the Americans or to the Australians and then retiring. I know very, very few people who have created a, uh, a successful business who have then sat back and retired. They've gone on and reinvested that money. I think the big question is, you know, do you exit or do you, do you go? You should exit. You should get the cash, take the money off the table as soon as you possibly can. You know, buy your flash cars, get your houses, get your family sorted out, live large like CB, you know, um, <laughs> and, and, and do that sort of stuff. That's part of entrepreneurship and get, that's a base thing, you've got to do that. And then once you've done that, you know, with each one you get a bit more experience, a bit more networks, then you can think about sort of doing things bigger and bigger and bigger. Peter Beck's one of my heroes, he's a Kiwi hero. He went down to the Rocky Gulf with a new formula for putting rockets into space. Instead of using liquid fuel or solid fuel, he made a hybrid. It's the sort of things Kiwi do, think outside the square. So he made this hybrid rocket propulsion system, went down to the Haraki Gulf and sent a rocket off into interstellar space. Now you can't do that in America. It's illegal. They'd lock you up. You can't do it in Australia because the air traffic controllers want to know where it's going to land. We have no bloody idea where it landed. Because <laughs> we're Kiwis. We don't give a shit. And that's the magic. Thank you.